in this video we are going to overhaul uh, this centrifugal vacuum pump this is used for the sewage treatment plant it was giving problem that there was no vacuum developed by it and there was a leakage of water as well so we'll start opening this pump and see what's wrong with it the front part is the inlet part where the raw sewage comes in so this one looks okay and the blade seems fine as well i cannot see it touching any time anywhere now we will open further so we have opened the casing this one is the rotor which is making the vacuum it has a progressive cavity but seems like the problem is in the rotor because it's the material has gone very thin so it's not making proper clearances with the casing so we will have to see it perfectly like what's the problem in this looks like it's damaged as well on the edges and and the dimensions has reduced considerably there is erosion of the material now this is the end plate and this shows a deep uh, grooving marks as well for the wear because this pump is rotating and this must be touching the casing so the blade is this one this one looks perfectly fine there is no wear touching marks so this was not touching the casing so we will keep it aside this is the holder of the blade with which uh, cuts the raw sewage coming into the pump this is the casing where the rotor is circulating i can feel it that there is a wear and tear it must it is not visible nicely in this video but if you feel it with the hand you can feel the erosion of material all the way in a circular path so this can be the reason that why the vacuum was not developing now we have started cleaning the other parts of the pump already this is the motor side it has a single shaft only the bearings are inside the motor only this one is the mechanical seal part this was leaking water as well so we have to see what's wrong So let's compare what's wrong with this rotor. As you can see the new motor which we have in the spare is thicker and this one has gone down considerably in thickness as well as in the diameter as well. Uh, rest, this piece is a scrap now, we have to use the new spare one. As you can, con you can actually see the difference how much wear down has happened in this rotor over the time because of the usage the casing also we have to change seems like because the clearance has increased between the rotor and the case even if we use the new rotor if there is a wear down in the casing then we have to uh, again open the pump it will not replace the casing this is the new casing as you are seeing so i can see that there is considerable wear and down so we'll remove the locking key from the shaft to remove the mechanical seal and see if there is a damage to it there must be some damage that's why the water was coming so we will try to remove the mechanical seal from the shaft so the mechanical sheet seal is out this looks little bit bare down and on the sealing surface it has some cracks as well seems like this mechanical seal is quite old so this is the rotary part only the stationary part still in the end cover i am checking the shaft if there is some noise coming then we have to open the electrical motor as well if the shaft, there is some kind of play or there is some kind of noise so this is the stationary part as you can see so this has worn down as looks like we have to replace the mechanical seal as well so this is the two part sealing part surface this is the sleeve on which the uh, rotating part sits so now we will take out the end cover and i will show where this stationary seal was there 
so this is the end part and that's where the mechanical seal was sitting but the, it has an o-ring below it which keeps the water not you know coming out from it so it's like a fix when you are putting it just have to nicely press it down so that's how they seal together this one is rotating that is stationary nothing can come out from the shaft while the pump is in operation or in stationary state so seems like we have to change this one also the mechanical seal So let's overhaul the electrical motor because the shaft was making more noise that means the bearings are worn out. So we have already removed the end covers for the electrical motor, the fan side as you can see. The bolts that holding the both covers also have been removed from the motor. So now we have to open only the end covers by tapping with a light hammer. We have to do markings as you can see because then it's easier to put the cover in a right place. These are the two bearings for the shaft, different bearings. For the forward end it's a big bearing and for the aft end it's the small bearing. Okay, so marking has been done for the end covers as you can see. So now we are ready to open the motor. after opening the two end covers we have taken out the rotor part the bearings are still intact uh, there is no physical damage but maybe the inside traces are gone this is the stator part stator looks clean and there is no rubbing marks on it so this is good to go we just have to change the bearing from the rotor so this is the special tool which we are using to check out the old bearings this is pressing out the bearing out and pressing in the shaft so that's how it comes off from the shaft the old bearings sometime when the bearing is old it's very difficult to remove the one the shaft seems good after removing the bearing there is no wear and tear we have to use a heating medium here we are using oil heater to heat up the bearings so that when we are putting on the shaft it's much easier because the metal expands and it easily goes down onto the shaft. Okay, so the motor has been overhauled. Now let's start re replacing the pumps. Here the first o-ring comes in. Since the groove was not much deeper, I wanted to use a gasket maker permatex so that the o-ring sits in a one place and it doesn't come off easily. So I'm using this Permatex gasket maker. The casing is in. Now we have to put the rotor and then the casing of the rotor and the end plate. That's how the sequence is. It's a much, it's a quite a easy pump to do. So the casing is all assembled with Permatex all around. There is a o-ring inside as well. Now we have to use the, no, we have to put the blade holder. We have to be careful so that the blade is not touching anywhere. It's in the center part, otherwise it will damage the pump for sure. Now we have to only put the end plate, which is for the suction. And then we can test the pump. So this is now the complete pump. Here we have to put, uh, put the transparent sheet, like a cover. Okay, now time to check the pump if it's making vacuum. So as we can see on the gauge, it's making the vacuum quite fast because casing and the rotor is correct. Let's see inside. Inside the pump is running. Later on we can check for the heating and etc. So this pump is good to go.